Hi, Ian Zepp again. So in this series of videos, we're going to be showing how we can generate the minimum code coverage required to upload to the App Exchange. So at the end of our previous video, we tried to upload and it told us that we didn't have any test methods available for our Apex class. So what we've done is we've created an Apex test class. And now this test class only produces the minimum code coverage required to upload. And when I say minimum, I really do mean minimum. All we are doing in our test class is blindly calling the methods that exist on our extension and making sure that it doesn't blow up. This doesn't test anything. It doesn't check to make sure that values are being set properly. It doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't test any process flows or guarantee that you're moving from one place to another or even guarantee that at a basic level, the objects that we're saving are actually being saved back to the opportunity. All it does is call the methods that exist in order to generate code coverage. And now I present this, uh, I present it this way because what I see a lot in environments that I've been involved with is that you frequently get test coverage written as an afterthought. It's put in at the very end of the process, usually in a hurry, right before we have to push to production. Um, and it's written in such a way that all it does is produce the minimum code coverage required to actually go to production. So if we click on our test class here and we run our test, you can see that we have 86% code coverage. And so normally you might think 86% wow, look at this, everything is blue. The only things that are not blue are a couple of internal errors, which we probably won't expect. Um, a couple of catch clauses, you know, hey, this is great. You know, we're going to be able to push to production and we're not going to have any problems at all. Um, that's not actually the way that it works. So because I'm not testing anything in here, I could very well not be saving objects to the proper Record. So I could be putting my, my opportunity line items on a completely different opportunity and the test cases, they wouldn't know. Um, I could be failing things internally and it wouldn't know. I could not be forwarding back to the opportunity like I expected it and we wouldn't know. Because this test class, all that it does at this point is make sure enough of the methods get called that we can get to our 75% minimum code coverage. This is not the recommended way to do things, but this is what I see all of the time in environments that I'm involved with. Part of this is because of, the, of a time crunch issue. You simply need to get to production to meet a, a deadline that's been set by the business, whether it's an arbitrary deadline or whether it's a marketing-driven deadline or whether it's, you know, it doesn't really matter. The, the reason code gets written this way is because it's done as an afterthought. And while it's, it works to push to a production environment, in the long term, it actually costs a lot of money because the time required to go back and fix these problems once you're in production is an order of magnitude more expensive than to fix it before you've pushed to production. And the longer it sits in production without being properly tested, the more expensive finding bugs later on down the line becomes. So it's critically, critically important to get good unit test coverage that actually tests things in your controller to get that written before you've uploaded your package or before you've gone live because you, it will be much more expensive to do so after the fact. So with that said, I'll get off my soapbox and I'll simply demonstrate that at this point, now that we have code coverage, we can swing back over here to our uh, package and we can go ahead and upload this to the app exchange. So it passes all the tests and I'm simply going to upload this as version 1.0 as a managed package. I want to confirm that it's going to be managed and then I get to wait probably about 10 seconds while it finishes uploading. And now I have an installable AppExchange package. So in the next video, I'm going to show logging into the AppExchange side and customizing this.